What is up everyone, how's it going, and welcome back to the channel. With just over a month's worth of preparation, in just over 24 hours, the Game Week 1 deadline will have passed, and FPL will be back. In today's video, I'll be showing you how I'm currently lining up ahead of Friday's deadline, so if you're new around here, or you're enjoying the content, please give it a like, drop a comment below, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're trying to get close to 4k subs before the Game Week 1 deadline, so please help us get there. The main question is, will we go with Salah, or will we leave him out? So let's see how I'm lining up. The first point to note is I've opted for the 3-5-2 formation and this is one that is very popular amongst FPL managers with the most recent injuries to Jesus and Nkunku. I just feel that there's better value in the midfielder spots compared to the striker spots so that's why I've gone for the 5-man midfield. Starting off in goal so I've gone with Onana of Man United and I want some United defensive cover and Onana comes in 0.5 of a million cheaper than Shaw so that's why he gets his place. United have some great fixtures against Wolves and Forest in their opening games, so that's the reason why I want him in there, and saving money along the way definitely helps. Moving on to the defence so, I've gone with the highest owned defender in the game in Estepinion, and Brighton have some lovely fixtures in their first opening three games, and there's every chance Estepinion can get an attack in return, which we've seen last season and also in pre-season. Looking at Arsenal's first seven fixtures, a way into the defence is definitely a must, so I've opted for Gabriel, price of 5 million. He's also a cheaper way into their defence, with Ben White price at 5.5 million. And Gabriel also has that attacking threat from set pieces, where he scored 3 goals last season. With their favourable fixture run to start the campaign, I'll be hoping to see some clean sheets, and maybe some attacking returns along the way. Finishing off the defence then, is Ben Chilwell. And looking at him from pre-season, he's been very lively under Poch, where he scored once, and assisted once. He'll also be on some set pieces and corners, so there's also a chance of an attacking return, and even though they face Liverpool in game week 1 and a London derby in game week 2, I'll be keeping them in the team because of Chelsea's fixture run from game week 3 onwards. That's the back four, let's get on to the midfield. So my midfield consists of two Arsenal, two United and one Brighton attacker. We'll start off with the must-haves in midfield and Bukayo Saka was the first team on my team sheet with Arsenal's favourable fixture run. We all know the crack with Saka, he's on penalties, he's on set pieces and he's most likely to play 90 minutes every game week, so that's why he should be the first name on your team sheet. The next must-have player in your team is Marcus Rashford, as he's an out-of-position midfielder playing up front for United, and that means he obviously gets an extra point for a goal and a clean sheet. I know Bruno Fernandes is on penalties, but with Rashford playing in the central position, he's definitely worth the point five extra. With Arsenal's favourable fixture run to start the campaign, I was all set on having Gabriel Jesus in my team, but he's since sustained a knee injury that'll see him out for a couple of weeks, but I still want my Arsenal triple up, so I've opted for Martinelli in midfield. He is more slightly at risk of minutes compared to Saka, but I'm still predicting that he'll do well against Forrest in the opening game on Saturday, and hopefully he'll kick on with some good fixtures against Palace, Fulham, Everton and Bournemouth in their first seven games. With some decent fixtures for United to start the campaign, I've opted for Bruno Fernandes to complete my United triple up. I'm expecting Man United to run right against the managerless Wolves on Monday night of game week one, and Bruno has added bonus of being on penalties, so of all options covered there, with Rashford up top and Bruno on penalties. With those four midfielders sorted, that means I've only one space left for a six and a half midfielder and Matoma gets a nod for now. Brighton have a lovely run of fixtures to start the campaign, with Luton at home, Wolves away and West Ham at home, so that's why I want Matoma in the team. He's not locked in however though, as Aze and Mbwema are also good options here, and the only downside with Matoma is he isn't on penalties, where Mbwema and Aze is. Eze has definitely been the star man out of the trio six and a half midfielders in pre-season, where he scored twice and assisted five times for Palace. The only downside with going with Eze at the start off is that Palace do face Arsenal in game week two, so with Brighton having the better fixtures, I'm currently leaning towards starting with Matoma, but when Brighton's fixtures turn after game week three, I can offload to Eze and Buemo, depending who's in better form. One notable omission I've reluctantly left out of my team is Mohamed Salah, but with their fixture against Chelsea and Newcastle in their first opening three games, I'm hoping that the Arsenal double up and United double up can score more points. That's the five man midfield, let's get on to the strikers. It's no surprise that Erling Haaland was the first name into my team and I've also given him the armband away to Burnley on Friday evening. Amazingly, he's currently on a goal drought of up to six games at the moment, but I'm hoping he can turn this around on Friday evening and hopefully he'll come away with a double digit haul. My second striker spot is currently still up for debate, but I've opted for Ollie Watkins as of now, as he's been in fine form in pre-season, scoring four goals over Villa's tour. Villa do have a relatively tough task away to Newcastle in game week one, 
but they then faced Burnley and Everton in game week 2 and game week 3 where Watkins could easily return. The other upside with Watkins is it allows me to have flexibility at his price point so I have the ability to downgrade him if he's underperforming. It also gives me time to scout Darwin Nunes, Nick Jackson and even Joe Pedro to see if he's got his place in the starting eleven for Brighton. Looking at the bench then, Matt Turner has since made a move from Arsenal to Forest, so he's a 4 million goalkeeper who could potentially see some minutes. Moving on to the 4.5 million defender, to be honest it could be anyone and I have a few options to consider, but I've gone for Caldwell at the moment because when Brighton's fixtures turn in game week 3, Chelsea's fixtures turn for the better, so I might double up on Chilwell and Caldwell. Bell and Mumbama complete my 15 man squad and where they mightn't see minutes in my own starting 11, they could respectively see minutes in their own starting teams, so they're just cheap, cheap options that could see some minutes. That's my 15 man squad, but I still have to consider whether I want more Salah in the team or not, and the way I get him in is take out Bruno and Watkins, and I can get Salah and Joe Pedro in then. From this then, I'm about 85% of the way locked in, and I just need to consider whether or not to go with Salah. If you made it to the end of this video, please give it a like, drop a comment below, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're trying to get close to 4k subs before Friday's deadline. I'll see you all Friday evening on my own YouTube deadline stream ahead of Game Week 1 where we might see some potential City team news. Thanks for watching. FPL is back. I'll see you in the next video.